Welcome back to Become a Better Programmer and today we're going to talk about how to estimate work as a software developer. Before we start talking about this topic and, and the tips that I have for you in order to, to become better at estimating work, I want to tell you that this is one of the things that are are, no matter at the level you're at. If you're a junior developer or senior developer, you have about four years of experience you're between junior and, and senior it's complex it's complex because we're dealing with different scenarios uh, different different situations every first and more foremost it, every project is different some projects might have similar functionalities but at the same there are variations between projects it also depends on of the scenario you're working on are you working with large companies are you working on startup startup companies are you working with smaller size companies? Are you working with as a freelancer as well? All of those things affect affect the way you're gonna estimate work. I'm gonna give you some some tips uh, that I personally have used uh, during these years to to help me figure it out and be be, be better to estimate the work. Now I want to make sure that estimating work doesn't mean throwing a random guess. So for those of you who are not working professionally in the software development uh, field, usually how this works. Uh, you have meetings with, with the company, with, with your team, you get it together, you figure it out what are the things that you need to work. All of those things are separated into tickets with whatever software ticketing tool that they use. And then they, they define all of these acceptance criteria and then also they they define the due dates and how long is it going to take you to finish the work, which is the estimating process. So what I want you to tell you is don't guess for the sake of guessing. Take an educated guess. Just don't say if you're going to work on the login, login form, for example, that's going to take me about four hours, I think. No, take an educated guess. Have you worked on this in the past? For example, have you done something like that? Do you have enough experience? What's your level as a software developer? Are you junior? Are you pretty much brand new? Are you a senior? Take into consideration all of those factors. If you notice, one of the situations that I was talking about is company. So I'm going to tip number one. I want you to truly understand the, the, the internal development process that the company has. For example, I'm going to tell you my experience. I started working with a smaller software development company. In that company, it was basically if you were assigned a work and you started working on that, if you were working on, on a ticket. Let's go back into a, the, the example of the login form. I was working on the login form, uh, developing the UI, developing the API, and then as soon as I got it finished, I would run myself those tests, making sure that the development process was good or not. And maybe my coworkers here and there, they will also check, make sure that everything was good. Give a quick smoke test, making sure that, that the process was good. Then uh, pretty much the work was done. Now, whenever you start working on the larger companies, medium to large companies, probably they're going to have a greater budget. Probably they're going to have dedicated teams for X, Y, Z. So now, what kind of dedicated teams we're gonna have? Uh, maybe they're gonna have a testing team. Maybe they're gonna have a security team. Things like that that you didn't have at the smaller company. So that's something that you have to take into account when it comes to estimating the work. Because when you're working on one feature, when you're working on a user story, if you're using uh, a Scrum, uh, Agile methodologies, when you're working on a user story or a feature or developing part of a software, it's not just you, the one who, are work who is working on, on that. It's oftentimes a combination of different processes that you have to go through at least. The, the development is just one section. So you do your, if you're a software developer, you're part of the development process. And then you got to make sure that that development is, is, is sent to the testing team and the testing team is going to make sure that everything was good or not. If it's not good, they're going to send it back and you're going to start fixing those bugs. Instead of working with larger companies where the development process has to go through, well, obviously it's going to take longer amount of time. It's going to take not only 
just reviewing the, making sure that the, the the processes are working fine who knows maybe you have to perform code reviews you have to make sure that it's deployed at the different stages because usually in software development when you're developing something you, you have different stages you might have a release or a staging version you might have a production version you might have development version it depends but I want you to take that into account. Make sure that if it, the more stages it goes through, of course, the longer it will take to accomplish. My next tip on the list is be honest with yourself. Take a personal assessment of what point in your career you are. Are you at the point that you're just starting? Are you at the point that you have a couple of years of experience? Are you at the point that you've been working on software development for about five plus years? I think that seven plus years, seven plus years is just gonna be about enough. Like you're gonna learn, keep learning more stuff, but you have learned most of uh, what you need to learn as a software developer. But anyway, at what point in your software development career you are, right? That's point number one. Cause that's gonna tell you, that's gonna help you evaluate like, okay, Let's go back into the login form example that you have to develop as a software developer. Probably that login form as a newbie that could take that person just to throw a random number, two days worth of, worth of work. As a junior developer with, I don't know, few, few months of experience that could take that person, let's say about a day, a day and a half. With a person with about three to five years of experience, that person can take in about a day worth of work. And then you maybe you're talking with the senior developer and that person can take it probably half a day. So that's something that you have to take into account. Be honest with yourself. It's okay if you're at the junior level, if you are just starting, it's okay. If it's gonna take you long, that's fine. Everybody has gone through that process. It's just not gonna be as easy in the beginning. It's gonna take a learning curve as you're gonna learn all the processes, best practices, what you need to take into account when developing um, features. Also to learn better how to find solutions or to come up with your own solutions as well. So it's okay. Take a personal assessment and figure it out if you are under the beginner level or the seniority level and also have a plan for yourself of, okay, this usually takes me X amount of time to develop. Another tip that I want to give you is add padding time to fix bugs. Remember you are on a software career and probably if you are, if you have from one month to 10 years of experience, you know that software is not built perfect on this very first time. No, it takes a lot of time to make sure that your software is correct, is secure, is safe, is making sure that it's doing the, the right job, it's meeting the, the business needs that your client, your customers uh, need, or if it's a, a product, an internal product of a company, is making sure that those things are taken care of correctly are you basing it off of accepting criteria and is following those and everything is is good that's one thing that i want to give you as a piece of advice give yourself padding time if it's about two hours of padding time that's fine if it's four hours of padding time that's fine remember remember the, the previous steps or the previous tips base it base it that padding time off of uh, how large is the company and also your personal assessment of what stage of your career you are by the way one thing that i forgot as well is that some companies some companies have a stricter development processes or just because of uh, if they are a consultant company uh, and they you constantly deal with with contracts making apps uh, software for different for our businesses like or sometimes that they include within the contrast to make sure that it's got tests so if you're a software developer where uh, in which you you haven't done so much unit tests and then you're working with this new company and this new company uh, requires you to 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 develop unit tests on top of the feature well that's something else that you have to take in account it's going to take a longer amount of time especially if you are new at working with unit tests that's something that you have to learn it's going to take a lot of time for experience and make sure at least at the beginning double to triple the amount of time that i'm 
usually estimating to work on that particular feature. I'm telling you, it's going to be a little bit of a, a complex thing to work on unit tests. It's the same thing. It's kind of like the same thing of the seniority. If you are a junior or developer or junior, if you're a junior or senior developer, of course, a senior developer is going to figure things out quicker. The same thing. If you're working on unit tests, you're in unit tests, you might be a junior developer. That means that it's going to take you a decent amount of time. So don't forget about that. Literally double to triple the amount of time that you're going to work on. You're going to estimate if you're working with unit tests as well. Another tip that I have for you is don't be so hard on yourself whenever estimating your work and you come up to the point that is not good. Like you just, man, you estimated something and it's totally, totally, you didn't estimate it correct. It's okay. You're gonna fail several times. It's gonna take practice. It's gonna take time to understand, to better estimate the work. It's gonna, I mean, it's the same thing as learning something, something new. It's gonna take you a certain amount of time to learn JavaScript. It's gonna take you a certain amount of time to understand Angular, even though it's using JavaScript as a programming language. The same thing happens. It's gonna take you some time to, to learn React. So it's the same thing with estimating work. It's gonna take time and it takes time in and also doing different projects, different working with different companies, working with different projects, dealing with different situations, businesses, clients, etc. So it's okay. It's not going to be perfect. And even if you're at the seniority level, this is still not perfect. But at the seniority level, most likely you are doing a better job of estimating because you have accumulated a bunch of experiences that help you understand or determine whether or not you're going to be able to uh, put a good estimate. Another tip that I have for you is, it's better always, if you have a choice between overestimating instead of underestimating, go always for overestimating. The reason why is because usually things don't, don't go as you expected. Let, let's face it, sometimes, let's say you're working on a user story or a ticket, and that ticket doesn't truly really mention all of the, the, the acceptance criteria, all of the, the things that you have to make sure that is, is taken care of whenever you're developing. So then you start communicating back to the business owner or, or the business analyst or with the clients, if you're working directly with the clients and it takes a longer amount of time. That's just, just one scenario. Oh, another scenario is whenever you expect it to fill or to build this login form that initially it seemed to be fairly straightforward and you ended up becoming a little bit of a pain. Always overestimate. Don't think that even though you have worked on things in the past, uh, it's going to be easier or it's going to take you less amount of time. Yes, most likely it's going to take you less amount of time, but don't estimate it in such a way that is very tight, that is going to force you to, to, to constantly to make sure that you're going to be working on that until, I don't know, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., because the reality is that you did not estimate that correct. If you are working longer hours because you're not you're not completing the work within uh, the dates that were established to be completed, then that means that there, there was a problem in the process of estimating the work. The, the, that means that we underestimated so much and now we have to compensate it with more hours of work. There you are, those were my tips on how to estimate work as a software developer. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified for future videos about software development, tutorials, tips, how to grow in your professional career. If you have additional comments that you would like to share with the community, please share them in the section below, in the description below. Uh, I'm sure thing, I'll read all of those comments. I'm gonna check them out and see if I, I missed something. Other than that, hopefully you like this video and I'll see you until the next time. Happy coding.